For the longest time, I've wanted to get an electric car. Not only because they cost less to run, they don't produce any running emissions, and they're heaps quieter, but also just because I love cool new tech. But I was stuck on one main issue. How would I charge it? Despite living in a fairly modern apartment here in Australia, our building didn't have any electric vehicle charging infrastructure, nor any easy way for me to plug in my car space. Yes, you could always go to a public charger, but this would mean you needing to go perhaps once every one to two weeks to fill up. I really didn't think an electric vehicle would be convenient for me if we needed to go out to a public charger and spend 40 minutes to an hour waiting for the battery to recharge. We don't often visit locations with a fast charger and there aren't any near our house. Not to mention that power costs via fast charging are a lot more expensive than what you'd pay at home. In this video, I'm going to be going through the almost six month process that it took me to get a Tesla charger installed in my apartment car space. To set the scene, I live in a 50 unit building spread across three floors. There are also two basement levels of which my car spot is on the bottom level. In the basement, there's an electrical board to power the lights, some pumps, and some regular power points for cleaners. Probably if my car space was next to one of these power points, I could have just avoided this whole ordeal. But alas, my car space was not. All of this electricity used in the basement is paid by the owner's corporation and then shared across all 50 owners in the building. So when I pay approximately $1,000 per quarter, some of that goes to the power bill, which covers lights in common areas, the lift, the garage door, and things like that. So before I purchased a new car, I wanted to make sure that there was actually gonna be a way to charge an electric vehicle in my car space, and this required getting electricity there. There are a few different ways and speeds in which you can charge a car. The first is the simplest way, just plug into a regular electrical outlet. This is the slowest option, taking over 24 hours to fully charge a Tesla Model 3, adding 15 kilometers of range per hour. But if you already had a garage or another option with a power point, you wouldn't need anything to be installed. Just go ahead, plug in, and you're good to go. The second is to install a dedicated charger. This is able to run at a higher amperage, which means it can charge your car faster. For a regular single phase installation, this can be up to 50 kilometers of range added per hour. The downside to this approach is you need an electrician to come and install the charger. If where you want to charge your car isn't near your electrical box, the installation could be tricky and expensive. For me, I wasn't fussed about which option we went with. In either case, I'd be able to charge the car in my car space, and I don't really do that much driving, so I'd be unlikely to need to charge from 0 to 100% very often, let alone twice in the space of 24 hours. But given my car space had no electricals installed at all, I'd need an electrician in any case, so I figured I may as well get a dedicated charger installed. The trickiest part for me was getting permission from the owner's corp to install the charger. Even though I own both my apartment here, as well as the car space downstairs, I'm not able to install anything in my car space without permission. And I don't legally own the space in the basement outside of the car space. In November 2021, I reached out to the property manager, asking about how I'd go about installing this. They said I need to fill out a building works form, of which I promptly did. I came up with two options. Both would involve my car space having a cable run to the communal electrical board. This would only involve about 20 meters of cables from my car space up through a spare conduit to the floor above and then into the existing three phase meter board. To work out how I'd reimburse the owner's corporation, I suggested two options. The first was a simple, dumb electrical meter, similar to what you'd have on your house for the electricity company to work out how much power that you've used. You can get what's called an NMI approved meter, which means they meet a regulatory body's standards for accuracy, ensuring that the data that's recorded was reflective of the power that I'd actually used. This would involve installing a device near the car space, of which had a little screen showing the total power usage in kilowatt hours over the lifetime of the device. At an agreed frequency, like every month or every quarter, I would self-report my power usage and pay the owner's corporation the cost of the power that I'd used. This meter would be in a publicly accessible place, so any committee member could ensure that my reported readings were accurate. The second option was to install a smart charger, for example, an Ocular IQ wall box. There are many different products that conform to the OCPP 1.6J standard, but essentially what this means is there's a standard way of reporting and controlling smart charger electricity usage. This approach would mean the owner's corporation could set up a billing platform linked directly to the smart charger and charge me automatically for any usage that I used. It would track power usage and know that my, the charger was in my car space, so I'd be billed for power usage. This option also allowed for load sharing. This meant if suddenly 50 other people in the building also all got electric chargers as well, the chargers themselves could dynamically distribute the power load across all users, 
so we don't draw too much power and the power capacity is divided fairly amongst all users. I submitted my two options and I waited and waited and waited. <laughs> and after many, many follow up emails from me, I eventually asked if I purchased the car, could I temporarily park in a guest car space which had a power point already there and use a plug in power meter to record my power usage. And then I waited and waited. And at some point during all this waiting, we looked at the financials of loaning a Tesla Model 3 across four years and decided to order it, knowing that I may not be approved to even charge in my own car spot. But our previous car was on its last legs. It was actually burning oil. And I thought that getting the car might motivate the OC to get a wriggle on. So in the end, we ordered a new Tesla Model 3 standard range in white with white seats in December 2021. Eventually, I got a hold of the building manager and they told me that the committee who represent the owners corporation didn't want to be responsible at all for the charger. Even though I'd provided options where I'd be paying for both the initial installation as well as the ongoing power usage, they didn't want to need to be responsible for owning or maintaining the infrastructure. So I looked around my building and I realized that I could run a cable directly from my apartment here down to my car space via some electrical cupboards which run the full height of the building. This would mean that the power would come off the switchboard in my apartment and the power usage get, gets billed as any other power usage in my apartment would. With this approach, technically feasible, the next step was to get approval to install a cable on the common property between where our apartment ended and where my car space started. The property manager told me I'd need to create a lease agreement, which is a 99 year contract defining the conditions of my usage of the small piece of space between my apartment and the car space where the cable was gonna be run. I had a lawyer draft up an agreement for $1,000 and then I needed this contract to be agreed upon by more than 50% of the 50 owners in the building. That's right, all these people needed to be involved in a decision to install a cable in the walls and 25 of them needed to agree. So my biggest worry wasn't actually that 25 people wouldn't vote yes, it'd be that not even 25 people would even vote at all. Oh, and did I mention it cost another $400 to conduct this vote? By this stage, I'd already received the car and luckily the owner's committee gave me temporary permission to park on, the, on weekdays in the guest car space uh, where I could plug my car in. But it was annoying to have to move on weekends and put up a permit, so I was pretty motivated to get my own charging setup installed in my own car space. Finally, on the 1st of June, eight months after I originally inquired about installing an EV charger, I finally had it installed. I got the Tesla Wall Connector Gen 3 installed, which gives me up to 50 kilometers of range per hour via a CCS plug. I also had the electrician run an ethernet cable and install a unify access point in my car space so the car had internet access and could update while charging. So in total, I spent $1,000 on the contract, $400 for the vote, $750 on the charger hardware itself, and finally $3,100 for the install, totaling $5,250. I also spent many months and countless hours going back and forth with the building manager and the electrician to try and find the perfect solution for everybody. So being able to charge the car in my own spot is awesome. I love being able to get home, plug the car in, and by the time I leave the next day, the car's back on 100%. Generally, the maximum we travel in a given day is maybe 100 kilometers, which we're able to charge back in, up to, in just under two hours. We have some family about an hour and 15 minutes away in a regional city here in Australia, and we're able to make it there and back and still be on 20 to 30% charge remaining, which by the next morning is then back to 100%. I've set up a power plan with a retailer called PowerShop, which gives us nine cents per kilowatt hour between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. I've set the car to begin charging at 12 a.m. and most nights it doesn't even need to charge for more than an hour, making the car's ongoing maintenance cost incredibly, incredibly cheap. So the question I've been asked a whole bunch of times is if I knew it was gonna take eight months and over $5,000 and hundreds of emails and calls back and forth, would I still do it? Honestly, I probably would. Although I can't really imagine that many others would be as motivated as I was. I don't think the public charging infrastructure is mature enough to support us yet, so I'd probably have to find it I'd probably find it tricky to own an EV without the home charging setup. It's proven to be very convenient and cheap, and I think this is one of the main benefits of actually owning an electric vehicle. But with that said, it was a huge hassle and something I think apartment and strata owners across the world are gonna need to have to have a bit of patience to deal with. The education legislation hasn't quite caught up yet, so if you were to go through this process, you'd likely need to pave the path forward and head into uncharted territories as I've done. When I took this issue to a vote with all the other owners, I had a number of other owners actually asking me what my plan was with the view of installing a charger themselves in the near future. So I think people understand that EV is the way forward, but they're not really sure about how to be ready for them. So some tips for anyone else considering an electric vehicle and wanting um, to know about how to navigate this, I'd offer a few pieces of advice. Firstly, you need to start that process really early. 
Even if you're not thinking of buying an EV in the next 12 months, ask your building manager what it would take to install an electric charger. It's likely gonna be a really long process and so the earlier you can start it, the more likely it'll be ready when you are. My second tip is find the simplest option that you can. When I originally suggested using common property power, I thought this would be the easiest option. But even though the cable run itself was really short, this introduced many complexities around responsibility of the infrastructure itself. In the end, it was far easier if I managed everything myself, even though the actual installation was more complicated. In other words, the complex part wasn't really the technical installation, but rather the legalities and legislation. My final tip is a warning. Be prepared to have this cost a lot more than if you were to own your own garage. In addition to the extra fees around the contract and the vote, electricians don't really want to work on buildings like this. They know it can be hard to get approval and electricians need to submit their insurance and safety policies to the building manager for approval. Why would they bother doing this if they could do far easier jobs in regular residential buildings? So there's my eventually rewarding saga on how I got an electric vehicle charger installed into my apartment building. It took a really long time, but the benefits around convenience and cost make it absolutely worth it. I spent a lot of time online before I went through this whole process trying to find other people that had done it. And it isn't really a well-documented topic, so give this video a thumbs up if it was useful. I'm interested in hearing your experiences getting a charger installed in an apartment. Was it easy or are you encountering resistance? Let me know in the comments down below and thanks for watching.